Well, I just made a pancake coil here with a diameter, an OD of about 10 inches, and the hole in the middle is about two and a half inches. And so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven turns or thereabouts. And as it sits right this moment, it measures 11.75 microhenries according to my little meter. So when I made it, I just kind of started at one end and hand wound it to the outside. And as you can see, I don't have enough uh, tubing here to match up with this. So I'm going to uh, swage a, a piece of copper tubing of the right length so I can attach it right on there uh, with soft solder and then I'll be able to hook up my normal compression fittings to an induction heater. So here's my piece of tubing and the first thing I've cut it to the length I need and the first thing I do is I take a 3 16 drill bit and just kind of clean out the material from the inside that got there from cutting the uh, tube to length with a regular tubing cutter. Okay, so that's all that takes. I guess I'll do the other end too as long as I can. Now that I've got this open up to 3 16 of an inch, I put this uh, the tubing in the, this flaring tool sticking up, I don't know, a little under a half an inch. Tighten it up. Tighten it up in there. So, half an inch sticking up. Okay, so now, here's my swaging tool. If you look around for uh, swaging copper tubing, you find all kind of tools for doing this. But this is one that I just made, uh, and the, the smallest diameter here is, uh, is just uh, a couple thousandths under three sixteenths, and it's that length for about a quarter of an inch, and I've tapered it to make it go into the tubing a little easier, and then just uh, let it get bigger to kind of give me a stop. I suppose it could be anything. I made this one out of uh, S1 tool steel. Probably mild steel would even work fine. You just stick the swage in the hole and then start hammering and uh, apparently uh, it, it's easy to get the, uh, the swage to get off center. So the guys that I see do it kind of just tap using the side of the hammer so they don't miss and hit themselves and then look at it from time to time to see that the uh, swage is going square. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's a little off to an angle there. So I give it a little hit to straighten it back up and hit some more. Okay, apparently before you start swaging you're supposed to Put a little tiny bit of oil on here. Turn. I suppose it's the random randomness of hand holding this thing that makes the process work. Again, there are lots of fancier tools. It's coming along. Probably for what I'm doing here with the low water pressure that's going to be used on this on this uh, work coil. Eh, just trying to get it, make sure it's straight again. Probably an eighth inch would be enough.
it just stuck a little bit so I just hammered on it the side of it a little bit to square it up And I think that's plenty. So that's my little swaged piece of copper pipe. So I'll just take it out of here. Hitting like this does kind of mark the mark the uh, the pipe a little bit but we really don't care in this application I don't think so let's see if it fits and it goes right on there and it's pretty snug so uh, soft solder is going to make that work out just fine could have gone farther but I don't really need to